But this guy, I mean, buddy, old pal, you are in fish of a lifetime here in the deer field. And I'm hearing some rises, which is nice. Could catch some more of those guys. This is why I'm, I haven't been able to eat breakfast or lunch or anything. I've been, yesterday was a 14 hour day here. And uh, today, I, don't, I have no idea what time it is. Uh, well, there's a time thing on here, but I think it's a little off. I think it's 9.30, then it's 9.30, I haven't fixed it, but 9.30 in the morning. And that is, uh, that was a fish, he's gone. I came right across from there, and we're just making some casts across, and letting the woolly bugger sink down naturally. I had mentioned that I was fishing uh, with a woolly bugger, and, and this is that, that fly. It's a big, huge fly that I tied up. I usually, I, before I fished the deer field, I was using it to catch bass in, in ponds and in swamps, but this particular imitation here worked real well. You see, my, uh, my woolly bugger looks a lot like this, this guy that I caught under a rock here. You know, just a nice fat piece of protein for the big rainbow trout to come and uh, get their breakfast on. But once I saw that there were a few of these guys swimming around, I said, oh, I think this woolly bugger is, is the right fly to use for this situation. Well, Larry told me about another spot on the Deerfield River that was uh, located as a nice big pool located uh, closer to the Fife Brook Dam. And that's uh, close to where they release the water. So you need to be careful. I, I actually got caught on the wrong side of the river and was lucky. Um, the river came down and uh, took me under, but I survived it. But you really need to pay attention when you're fishing the Deerfield River. Um, you need to pay attention to the, uh, the, the water flow um, because once they release it from the dam, that water rises quickly. Uh, and if you're on the wrong side of the river, you're in some trouble. But, but this is a great fishing spot. This place was uh, the brook trout um, were here. Um, and again, another, another great um, piece of advice from Larry Pringle. Showing me where to go on the Deerfield River. Deerfield River Brook Trail. Let me drive by. Show you this up close and I'll let him go. This is the kind of fish I've been catching, stocky little footballs. You can see this here, but beautiful brook trout. Jesus, barely, barely hooked. There he is. Take a still photo of this guy. So it was great. Um, I'd be fishing alone for a while, and then I'd hear, hear the motorcycle coming down the road, and, uh, and Larry was back on the river. All right. Hey, is that timing or what? Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> How was the ride here? A little chilly? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit on the cool side. Well, last night, when I came, I got caught on the other side of the river, too. Oh, no. They, they let the flow last night at Fife Brook at 5. I had no idea. Yeah. I was into fish. I had just I had just landed a 17-inch rainbow. Wow. On the, fly, on the dry fly. I, I, I got a couple on the dry fly. Mm -hmm. I, honest to God, Larry, I, I unhooked the fish and noticed that my rod was in a little bit more water because I set it on the rocks. Mm. It was a little bit, but yeah. a lot of the things that have fallen from the trees were wrapped around my rod. I said, what's going on? Yeah, and, then, yeah. and then I turned around and I heard the roar. Oh, my goodness. I made it across, though. What, where were you at? On here? Over here, but across, wow. the, but across the other side. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's scary. I tell you.
Now, sometimes when you're fishing in a river with so many caddisflies hatching about and flying about, it's hard to you know, get the trout to take yours, but we were having some good luck on this trip. Uh, the trout didn't seem to mind. Uh, they were going for those imitation caddisflies who looked something like the real deal and looked close enough to the realistic version of the of the fly that they were taking it and some big trout were coming up and eating those little flies and and that was the one of the biggest lessons I learned about river fishing and, and really the, the the main things that I learned is not to worry about making big casts the fish are right in front of you Larry taught me uh, that the fish were there you just need to have patience you don't need to make long casts you'll get the fish and the other piece was to have a small tippet the tippet is the piece of the line that connects to the thicker fly line in the leader. And that little tippet is important because you need to, if the fish see a, a large line coming out of the eye of that hook, they'll shy away from it and go for a natural uh, version of the bug versus the artificial. So you need to really have a, use a nice thin tippet and you need to keep that fly on the top of the water by using a little floating uh, gel. And uh, those three things right there, if you just take those and go to your favorite river and have some patience, you'll have success just like I did on this trip. Okay, it's a uh, Saturday morning here and this is a brook trout. This is like the size of the ones we've been catching. Probably, I don't know how many of these things, over 50. 50 brook trout. There's a little caddis fly that we use, a little 16 caddis. And then, this is the size of the brook right here. They're big. Real big and chunky fish. I had to get him back in the water. He's gorged himself with insects. Give you an idea of the size of this thing. Oh, that's my big hefty thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, on the fourth day, yeah, it was nice. time for uh, it was time for me to go home, and Larry was going to stay for another day or two. Those are so pretty. Um, and it was it was kind of sad leaving the river on that day. Fish of the day right here. Um, I had enough, I had caught a lot of fish and I was still to this day very thankful that I met Larry and he shared all these great spots with me. Uh, look oh, forward to going nice back but ball, right before I left I, I sat really nice by myself just uh, filming Larry uh, do his thing in the river. He's a very good fisherman, well-known fisherman um, in western Massachusetts. Yeah, um, everybody knows who Larry is he catches his share of trout all over New England. Nope. And he does it in a very simple way. He, he's, he's very quiet. He's consistent. That's like the one that, and uh, he enjoys like it more can, than anything yeah. else uh, that he can do. And, and it just when you're hanging out with a guy like that, it's just a lot of fun and real easy to fish next to that guy. So I owe a lot to Larry, and I look forward to many, many more days on the stream. But at this point... It was time for me to go back and uh, head back to Sharon and uh, put this trip in the books as, as a memory and put it on film. But it's a trip that I will not ever forget. Four days on the Deerfield River in 1997.